Good evening, fabulous people, and welcome to DXB Today. We have a fantastic, fabulous fitness show for you today, and it's gonna be wonderful. Here's what's coming up. I went over to the right market to check out some of the amazing food and activities that you can get involved with down there. It was a great time. Katie decided to break a sweat at Reset Fitness in Jumeirah Islands. And plus, to end the Dubai Fitness Challenge on a high note, we've got a very exciting fitness challenge and routine that's going to be happening in the studio live with Jennifer towards the end of the show. Faris, I know you're going to be looking forward to that. You're doing it, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am doing it. And a little birdie told me, Lane, that you're probably going to be doing it with me as well. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm not we'll ready. At the end of that. But have you guys <laughs> been getting involved with the 30 by 30 in general, or have you just been sticking to your regular routines? I love the 30 by 30. Not that I do my 30 by 30, but then I like doing a little bit of workout. I try to get my workout in at least four times a week. I'm a big fan of weight training. That's something I'm very passionate about. I enjoy personally, not a big cardio person. Person, but when I'm not in the gym, when I'm at home, I'm pretty much horizontal, which is, which is not great. Well, I mean, look, you, I, for me, it's, it's always been a thing. I've always been uh, like on my nutrition, so that's one thing I'm really on all the time. But this month in particular, Men's Health Month, so I've, I've joined the, the nutrition with the fitness aspect, so I've tried many different routines, and that's the wonderful thing about Dubai and all of these different um, challenges and fitness experiences that you can take part in. I mean, so. we're all getting better. We're all growing every single day, and that's why I'm really excited with some of the guests we're going to have on. We're going to have athletes. We're going to have Kayla Itzanese from the Sweat app, who is absolutely massive. I think 16 million followers, and she's going to be right here. You've been following her for really? a while, right? I have, actually. I mean, we are pretty close in our Instagram followers. She's just about 15 million, something more than I <laughs> yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Are, but very, yeah, I can't very remember. Close. Do you have more or less? Uh, I mean, I'm not who sure, knows, but, who? But, but, but who's keeping track of that? Yeah, Kayla is amazing. A lot of my girlfriends follow her. My, my girlfriend, Catherine, who's Australian, who's um, pregnant at the moment, is following one of her pregnancy w workouts on Kayla's app. It's a very, very popular app. Very, very cool stuff. Hey, listen, tell me about it, sister. But it's not all about <laughs> Kayla. We also have our guest co-host, who we're very excited to meet. But who is our guest co-host? Hi. I'm Jafar El Suri. I'm a former professional athlete and a current personal trainer, and I can't wait to see you guys tonight at the episode. Jafar will join us right here in the hot seat in just a few seconds. But first, Faris went down to Ripe Market to have a little picnic, explore some of the adventures, and dine around the food trucks at the market. Let's take a look. Today, I'm at El Safour at the Ripe Market at Academy Park. This is all here to support local businesses across the United Arab Emirates. There's lots to do, there's lots to see, so let's check it out. One of the coolest things you can do at the Ripe Market is definitely the Smash Room, where you can take out your frustrations on some household appliances. Let's get into it. And of course, what every good day out needs, we have food. So many amazing food trucks here with authentic and cultural flavors. We're gonna check some of those out right now. And here I am at one of the food stalls here at the Ripe Market. It's called Fusion Handful Noodles, and I'm here with the owner and founder, Mr. Hadi Abbas. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having me. So tell me, what's it like having your venue here at the Ripe Market? Well, it's been great. It's our first year here at Ripe Market. And as you can see, the crowd is uh, very, uh, they're from different nationalities all around and everyone's enjoying. There's a lot of activities going on and they're all e having lunch and dinner. So they're all enjoying the food and enjoying our handful of noodles. And they look absolutely amazing. And you were telling me about how you guys do noodles differently. Can you yeah. get a little bit more details yeah. up? So it's very unique in terms of uh, what people like. A lot of people, they've tried it for the first time here and the feedback's been great. Well, uh, I'm so excited to try the food. We have the traditional noodles, we have the truffle, and what are these? Those are chicken wontons. You definitely need to try this, it's absolutely amazing. Hadi, thank you so much. Thank you, for, thank you for having me, it's been a pleasure. And now we move on to one of my favorite things, it's tacos. We are here at La Patrona, and I'm here with operations manager, Edehan Lojero. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you very much for your call. So I need to ask, what's it like being here at the right market and bringing these tacos here? Actually, it's just to bring a, a, a different food to the people, to bring the Latin people to, to eat something which is going to be close to, the, to their homes. 
and to introduce our, uh, all our food to the all other nationalities around. It has been brought from Rodrigo and Gladys, which, uh, which are the owners of the company, with the intentions to, to deliver the, the, the Mexican foods to everyone, and it's working. Authentic Mexican food right here at the right market. And now we move on to absolute indulgence. We're talking sweet and savory. We're here at the Burger Stop and the Sweet Stop. And I'm here with one of the, uh, let's call them founders. One of the yeah. founders. We're here with Schwabe. So tell me about the concept, because it is quite an interesting one. It's two concepts under one roof. Um, me and my sister post-COVID were bored. We thought, you know what, Dad, can you open up your checkbook? <laughs> you know, <laughs> something that we're both passionate about. I like savory food, my sister loves sweets, uh, so we said, you know what, let's open two concepts under one roof. Uh, we've gone from very simple burgers, but all of our sweets are from the UK. Amazing, and you know that sweets from the UK are extra sugary compared to what we're used to. 100%, extra sugary, harder to get here, but tastes even better. Incredible, so uh, I love that you've got this whole family business going on. What's it like having your venue right here at the Right Market? Uh, right Market's amazing, we've been here for about three years now. Uh, what I love about Ripe is a lot of people from around different, uh, around the country, around the world, uh, families everywhere, and it just brings a nice atmosphere here. It's our third year here, and we'll definitely be renewing, carrying on. It's a shame we weren't able to meet your sister. Obviously, definitely. she's in the UK. Yeah. But I'm going to tuck into this hot dog. It's going to be the messiest thing you see on TV today. Thank you so much for having it. It's a pleasure. day I did some really cool activities burnt off a lot of calories and then I ate them right back again with some fantastic food you definitely need to check out the right market nice one Faris that looks fantastic mate now our guest co-host for today is a basketball player ambassador and an all-around nice guy an athlete dedicating his fitness experiences to the region's active and sporting scene Starting his career with Al Halal Basketball Club in Saudi Arabia, is a former professional player with the aim to bring positive change to the community. Please welcome Gaffa Al Sori to the show. Yes, King. How are you doing? Good to Thank see. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Nice one, man. So, bro, you've done so much. You've experienced so much. Been so much around the world. Yeah, I dabbled. In many a bit. places. Yeah. What keeps you still inspired? Um, not taking anything for granted, really. Uh, really being grounded in, in gratitude to the fact that, you know, I'm healthy, I'm able to do what I do, so why not keep on doing it every day? It's, it's, it's that simple to me, I think. Uh, I don't try to get into anything that makes it more complicated than I'm just grateful to be healthy, so I might as well keep moving. Um, as a personal trainer today, did you see a lot more of your clients being active and being a part of the 30-30 challenge? Of course, because um, when it's it's a lot easier to do things in a collective. So the energy of the city changes, everybody pledges to do their workouts and get into their 30 by 30. Um, it's easier for people to actually get into the whole camaraderie of things and collaborate together. And it's just an all around great vibe for everybody. So yeah, it's a lot easier. I mean, Jafar, I know that fitness, as far as I can tell, is your life, uh, but Obviously, there's a difference between being a basketball player and being a personal trainer. How did you make that transition from a competitive sport into something like this? Um, I found the bridge where peop everybody wants to be an athlete, but not a lot of people are able to train like one or be able to find uh, the common ground of how it is to be an athlete. So I look at everybody that, everybody was an athlete at some point, they loved the sport, whether you're a female or a male and you, uh, you played either football, volleyball, whatever it is. I took that and the mentality of being a professional athlete is a little bit different. I kind of bridged that into your workouts and how you approach a training. So there's a difference between an exercise and there's a difference between an actual program that is tailored for you to get somewhere. <coughs> training and exercise are two different domains. You're training, you're training specifically for a goal. There's something that you're trying to attain. Exercise for you to move around and, you know, enjoy your body and enjoy the, what you can do. Jaffer, I love working out. I try to put my four days a week in, uh, particularly weight training. It gets me so excited. But besides, of course, just the vibe of being in a gym environment, seeing people work out, besides the physical aspect of it, I feel like there's a big mental element to it. I feel like it helps me a lot with my anxiety and overall just feeling a sense of achievement when I walk out of the gym. As somebody who comes from a psychology background, what is your take on this? It's 
everything you said was 100% correct because exercise is a very key component to your mental health aspect. So if you go to a healthcare professional before, let's say you get into the medical side of things, they'll ask you to either talk to someone, vent out, let your emotions out and exercise. Why do, you, why do they prescribe exercise? It's because one, your endorphins are really, really high. You're actually focusing on one task at hand where you kind of block all the thoughts that are in your head. And at the same time, you have a sense of that you have achieved something and you kind of poured your emotions or whatever that you're feeling outwards. Um, there is also kind of a saying that we used to have where when you're anxious, run. <laughs> when you're sad, lift. So that's kind of a thing that happens most of the time with a lot of people. So you feel like, oh, I'm so upset right now or I'm sad and I'm feeling some negative emotions. So you just kind of just put on some heavy weights. You do a little bit of squats or some deadlifts, maybe a bench press. Punching bag? Punching bag. <laughs> but when you're, when you're anxious, running actually helps you or any form of cardiovascular exercise because your heart is kind of pumping and you're sort of you start focusing on the task at hand that is here and your thoughts kind of simmer down to, I just need to focus on my breathing here. Mm. And that's literally what it is. And that's what meditation is. You get to focus on your breath and cardio allows you to do that. So when you were playing basketball, um, mm -hmm. you seemed like you're a, a player's player, you know? I try to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so when you're, now you're training, mm -hmm. um, I heard that you're a trainer's trainer. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 got, I got involved in, in, uh, in training trainers, so uh, I was linked with a, um, an entity out here that was administering the National Academy of Sports Medicine curriculum, which is called the NASM, and for trainers to get certified, they need to go through the theat, uh, theory part of the work, and then you have the practical part, and the beautiful part about the entity is that they actually designated myself and a couple of other people to kind of help trainers get their certif certification. So I kind of became an educator, but that was for a very brief moment before I had to transition back into, you know, training my clients. I mean, the trainer of the trainers, he basically like the final <laughs> boss in the video game. <laughs> and it's definitely, definitely the man we need to have with us for the rest of the episode. Right now, we're gonna take a break, but after the break, we meet the OG celebrity trainer who revolutionized the fitness industry with her incredible app. It's called Sweat, and she's gonna be here in the studio. So don't you move a muscle. <laughs> 